and welcome to another lesson. Now, if you're wondering what am I doing with this block, this block is basically the essence of today's lesson. If you are learning about friction, the two types, kinetic and static friction, then we're going to be explaining it with further detail. Now, if you do have a block, I might apply a force and the block might not move. And possibly if I apply a larger force, the block might start on moving. Why is that the case? Let's have a look. So let's learn about friction. The first thing that we need to do, we need to define what is the force of friction. Friction is a resistive force that opposes motion. If you do have a box, the famous box, and you apply a force F, this box will be witnessing frictional force between the surface of the box and the actual surface that it's in contact with. Which leads us to the point, what are the two things which affect my frictional force? Number one, the nature of the surface or the material. If we have wood, if we have rubber, if we have wool, we have ice, we have water, all of them are considered to be different surfaces and they are going to exhibit a different frictional behavior. And this is represented by the letter mu, which stands for the coefficient of friction. This coefficient of friction is basically a uh, an experimental value based on the various test subjects that you have, whether you're going to be using wood, um, a metal surface, uh, concrete, whatever it is. You're going to be testing those surfaces and you're going to create a table, and it's created already, a tabulated version where you have the coefficient of friction clearly indicated for the various types of materials. So the first thing that affects the force of friction is basically your surface. The second thing which affects the force of friction, it is the normal force. Friction force is directly related to the normal force. To the normal force. If you take a look at the box again, the box has the weight acting on it, pulling it downwards. This is the force of gravity equals to mg, which is mass multiplied by the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81. Now, we're going to expect a reactive force from the surface, which is the normal force, which is given by the letter n. There is a direct relationship between the frictional force and the normal force. It makes perfect sense. Think about it this way. The harder you press on the object, the more contact is going to be having with the surface, which was going to lead to more resistive motion as you're trying to move this box across the surface. It makes perfect sense. So these are the two things that affect my frictional force. Now, what we're going to be doing right now, we're going to write down the two types of frictional forces. So friction could be broken down to two main types. Number one, I have my kinetic friction. And the second type, I have the static friction. Now, the kinetic friction, from the word kinetic, it means movement is involved. Static, no motion. From the word static, standing still. So these are the two types of friction or types of frictional forces that we may experience in our lives. So let's start off with the kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is the frictional force an object, let's say back to the box, the object witnesses 
as it moves across a surface. So if I have a force F, and the object is moving now with a certain velocity, it's going to experience a frictional force, kinetic friction, given by the letter, let's say, F. And small subscript K, which is going to oppose my motion during the duration of the movement. However, if I go to my static friction, the static friction has no movement involved. Same box, however, the velocity is zero, no motion whatsoever, yet I'm applying a force, and this force is being resisted, which is the reason why there is no movement in the first place by a force of friction given by the letter F and small subscript S, which is the static friction. So you notice the difference between both cases. Both of them, we do have friction, but one of them involves movement and the other one involves no motion, stagnation. So how do we go about calculating the force of friction? Let's start off with the kinetic friction. Like we have said, the kinetic friction involves movement and all of the frictional types both of them the static and the kinetic they depend on two things the nature of the surface the material which is represented by mu k the coefficient of kinetic friction it's a side note the coefficient for the static friction and the kinetic friction they are different even though they are from the same material it's important to keep this in mind and the normal force so if I want to calculate my kinetic friction, this is the kinetic friction. This is the coefficient of kinetic friction. And this is the normal force. And we're going to apply the same logic for the static friction. However, because the object is static, it's not moving, we have to set a limit. And we do so by saying less than or equal to. Then mu s, which is the coefficient of static friction, multiplied by the normal force. Why do we put less than or equal to? Because my box is not moving. And the force that we are applying is being resisted by this static friction. So it gets to a point, if we cross this number, this total number, we cross this amount or we cross this force, my object will start to move. So as long as we are exactly equal to it or less than this number, which is the force of static friction, we're going to be stagnation, in stagnation mode. We're not going to be moving. We're just simply going to resist the applied force. But once you go beyond this number, once you go beyond your static friction, you go more than mu s multiplied by n, you will tra be transitioning to the kinetic friction. So as you can see, this is the static friction, and this is the coefficient of static friction and this is again the normal force now in this current video we have clearly explained what are the two types of friction what is friction to start with what are the things that affect my frictional force let's have a quick recap on the content of this current lesson. So friction is the resistive force that opposes motion. It depends on two main factors, the type of the material, which is dependent on or represented by the coefficient of friction mu, and it depends on the normal force, which is directly related to the frictional force. Then we said we have two types of friction. We have the kinetic friction, which is dependent on the movement, and we have the static friction, where we have no movement at all. Both of them, they still obey the two uh, norms that the, the normal force is necessary to calculate the friction and the coefficient of friction is used as well as a representation of the surface in which the friction is taking place. However, the kinetic friction involves movement. Static friction, we have no motion. And we have established the formula for calculating the kinetic friction. 
and we've established the formula for calculating the static friction where we said the less than or equal to sign is just simply to set the limit at which I'm not going to have any movement. If I cross that limit, then I'm going to be transitioning to the kinetic friction. Now, in this current video, we're going to be wrapping it up at this current point. In the next video, make sure that you watch it. We're going to be having an application on these formulas where you get to apply and calculate the kinetic friction and we get to calculate the static friction as well through various problems. I really hope that you found the lesson beneficial and at this point, all of these doubts that you have between static and kinetic friction, they should be cleared out. So if you're a physics student, you're preparing for your upcoming physics exam, whether MSAT examination or entry-level engineering examination for your university requirements, then this is the place to be because we will be sharing with you expert knowledge with such ease that will take you to a whole new level with a fraction of the effort. So if that's of interest to you, by all means, join our growing community, smash that like and subscribe buttons. Also take a look at the uh, video description where you have a link to our academy and feel free to explore the courses that we have out there. Now, every now and then we do share some premium access, premium coupons for our growing community to help give them that push, whether at the educational level or the professional level. And on that note, I'm going to leave you off and I'll see you in the next video.